I seem to fly every week, and I always start by wanting to fly an Airbus 380. What if I told you the largest passenger aircraft ever built was a commercial failure? A plane that cost billions to develop, promised to change the way we travel, and yet, barely a decade later, was quietly killed by its own manufacturer. Why did it fail? Was it bad timing, bad design, or something no one in aviation saw coming? And here's the real twist. Some airlines still swear by it to this day. Well, it's a unique opportunity for me as a, as a smaller jet pilot. The year is the early 2000s. Long haul air travel is booming. Airports like Heathrow and JFK are reaching their limits, running out of slots for new flights. Airbus has a bold answer. Instead of flying more planes, why not make one so big it can carry twice the passengers in a single trip? The idea becomes the A380. Two full decks, four engines, and space for over 800 people in an all-economy layout. It's not just about moving more people. Airbus imagines luxury lounges. Hello, welcome aboard the Airbus 380. Duty-free shops, even in-flight casinos. The promise is simple. Revolutionize global travel and dethrone Boeing's legendary 747. But behind the optimism, a silent question looms. Can something this massive ever be profitable? At first, airlines lined up. Singapore Airlines became the launch customer in 2007, and passengers loved it. The cabin was quiet, spacious, smooth. But in the background, the market was changing and fast. Well, I have to say that I was nowhere. But Fuel prices spiked, making the A380's four engines expensive to operate. Twin engine wide bodies like the Boeing 777 were suddenly far more efficient, carrying nearly as many passengers at much lower cost. Then came another blow, the rise of point-to-point -point travel. Instead of funneling everyone through massive hubs, airlines could fly smaller, fuel-efficient jets directly between cities. The A380 had a problem. It could only make money on a few ultra-dense routes between slot-constrained airports. Anywhere else, filling 500-plus seats day after day became a gamble. There were also practical issues. Its 80-meter wingspan meant only certain airports could handle it. Maintenance was complex and expensive, and the aircraft's weight and structure limited how much newer, more efficient technology could be integrated later. Airlines started pulling orders. By 2019, the writing was on the wall. In February 2019, Airbus made it official. The A380 production would end. The last one would roll off the line in 2021. For Airbus, it was a public admission that its $25 billion gamble had failed to pay off. For airlines, the reaction was mixed. Emirates, the largest A380 operator, doubled down and kept flying them. But carriers like Air France, Qatar Airways, and Lufthansa began retiring their fleets early. The decision sent ripples through the industry. Thousands of jobs tied to the A380 program disappeared. Entire supply chains, wings from the UK, fuselage sections from Germany, tails from Spain, wound down. For aviation fans, it was the end of an era. The world's largest airliner, a marvel of engineering, would no longer be built. But a question remained. Had the A380 really failed, or had the industry simply changed faster than Airbus expected? When the pandemic hit in 2020, it seemed like the A380's final chapter had arrived early. Airlines grounded their fleets. Several sent theirs to long-term storage, or the scrapyard. Passenger demand collapsed, and smaller jets were easier to fill. But then something surprising happened. By late 2021, international travel began to rebound. Oh, but in 2021, 
DIA jumped up the ranks. Our highest ranking ever. Fast, slot-constrained airports like London Heathrow and Sydney saw demand surging again. Suddenly, airlines needed big capacity. Carriers like British Airways, Qantas, and Singapore Airlines brought their A380s back into service. Even Lufthansa reversed its earlier retirement decision. Emirates never stopped flying theirs, using them to dominate long-haul premium routes. Their onboard lounges, private suites, and showers in the sky became marketing gold. Passengers noticed too. Travel forums and surveys showed the A380 topping lists for comfort and experience. In an age where space is rare, this giant offered something unique. The plane's return raised a new question. Was the A380 simply ahead of its time? Today, no new A380s are being built, but some in the industry, including Emirates President Tim Clark, are calling for a next-generation version, lighter, more efficient, with new engines. Hey. Windows, yeah. their cameras outside, which relay the image. So. Could it happen? The cost to restart production would be staggering. Airbus estimates up to $20 billion. Most airlines remain cautious, but the demand for premium, high-capacity travel isn't going away, and slot restrictions at major hubs are only getting worse. If air travel continues to grow, the logic behind very large aircraft could make a comeback. Technology like the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan engine and advanced composites could fix many of the original A380's weaknesses. So, will we see a rebirth of the Super Jumbo, or will it remain a once-in-a-generation experiment remembered fondly but never repeated? What certain is this. In a world of increasingly similar aircraft, the A380 dared to be different. And for millions of passengers, that difference is unforgettable. If you've ever flown on the A380 or wished you could, drop your thoughts in the comments. Should Airbus bring it back or is its time over for good?